for this question on rate of change, uh, I would say sometimes uh, some students can get stuck on A part one. If let's say you forgot the idea about rate of change. So what do we mean by forget the idea? Okay, so first of all, uh, we started off with a spherical balloon. Okay, it's a sphere to start with. And in this question, they, uh, they gave you the volume of a sphere. So that means, right, subsequently you will need to use it. Okay, and then, right, so it's an empty balloon. And then they start to pump in helium gas at a constant rate of 500 centimeter cube per second. So what you need to understand by the 500 centimeter cube per second is this will be the symbol. So in differentiation, that will be the symbol. dB dt is 500 centimeter cube per second. Otherwise, in a very layman term, you will think about every one second, we are going to input 500 centimeter cube of gas. So in a differentiation term, it will be dB dt, but in a layman idea, then it will just be every one second, we will pump in 500 centimeter cube of helium gas. So right now they are asking for the radius of the balloon after one minute. So if you do not have the idea of like every second I'm inputting this amount of volume, you will not be able to do first part. So you will need to explore how much volume are there in after one minute first. So a minute is equivalent to 60 seconds. So you need to do a 500 times 60 to get the volume after one minute. So after one minute, right, my spherical balloon will be filled with this amount of gas. So then the volume after one minute will be 30,000. So I'm asked to find the radius. Which is just setting the volume formula to find the radius. So you can see that I execute the for third power R cube equal to 30,000 and I solve for R. Okay, while you solve for R, it's a chain of decimal. So you will give your answer as 19.3 as a 3SF answer. In the subsequent part, if you're going to be using this radius, do take note that you should be using the longer, more detailed uh, version of the radius. Okay, the next one we are supposed to find the rate at which the radius is increasing after one minute. The equivalent of after one minute essentially means that after one minute, this is the radius. So I will be using this radius. So even though I'm writing 19.3, when I input into my equation, I'm using the 19.275732. Okay, so your objective is to find the RDT. So with the volume formula, you can execute a differentiation first. So the differentiation done here is very easy. Just bring down power, minus power. And the next part is you need to relate, recall back a basic rate of change formula. So dV dt is equal to this formula. So that should be a basic formula that you should know. Okay, so the rate of change of volume is dV dr times dr dt. So one way to remember the formula is something like this. So dV dt, you can do it like a diagonal. And this two item here is actually meant to cancel off. So this two item here is meant to cancel off. That's why you will find that it's actually same thing. It's a dr here. So anyway, that is a formula. So within the formula, dV dt was provided to you. dV dr was worked up by your differentiation. So there are three things inside this formula. So one has been provided to you. One, you already worked it out using your differentiation. So the only one is to find dr dt. So this will be the expression for dr dt. So usually, I will prefer that I will get the expression first, then I input the radius. So usually I will prefer to get the formula first, then I input the radius. But sometimes some students don't do that. 
So some of you might already input it at this time. So that's fine as well. But I will say that it's easier for the marker to give you method marks. If you come up with a formula first, then you insert the value in case you have you make calculated a uh, mistake. But you will have gotten the method mark for showing the formula for the RTT. So this one, I will say that it's not very difficult if you can get past the first part. If you can't get past the first part, you realize that this radius cannot be used in the second part. So you don't have a radius to use. So you are stuck for the whole question. You can't continue. So it's very important to have a generic idea. What do we mean by 500 centimeter cube per second? It's actually a very uh, primary school thinking. The next one is actually not difficult. But what get people stuck is that they didn't know how to do the differentiation. So they actually gave you a formula. Okay, so whatever is it, they talk about pressure, they talk about volume, and there's the formula. So they actually provide you with these two values so that you can find your K. So after you found your K, you actually got a complete formula. Okay, then the question is asking for the rate at which B is changing with respect to P. That means, right, the question is asking for this. However, a lot of students, right, they will get stuck. They wouldn't know how to get a dvdp. So in order to get a dvdp, that means you need to differentiate. You need to have V as the subject first. So the critical step is making V as a subject. So you got to divide the P over and then apply your indices. That means you see this as 2.4 times 1 over P. And that's how the 1 over P become indices. So you got to have V as a subject then you can do your differentiation. And doing your differentiation is not difficult. You don't even need a uh, quotient rule or product rule. You just need a uh, bring down power minus power. So once you make V the subject, it's just bringing down power minus power and you get a dV dP. After you get your dV dP, you need to input something. You need to input the value of P. So the value of P that you should input should correspond to when B is equal to 2. So when B is equal to 2, so very simple, I put my V inside the formula. So I put my V inside the formula, I got 2P equal to 2.4. P is equal to 1.2. So that will be enough for me to input into my dV dP formula. So that will just be the answer. So the difficult part is some students get mind blocked. They don't know what they are finding or if they know what they are finding, they didn't know how to do a dvdp. So subsequently, if let's say the question has asked you for dp dv, so let's say they ask for this instead, then I will make p the subject. So I will divide this over I will make P the subject and then I will do a dP dV. So it depends on what is the level of differentiation that I that's asked from you. So otherwise, this question is also not very uh like there's not a lot of algebra involved, it's all simple algebra. Okay, so I will say if you can get past the making subject to the differentiation, this is not very that uh technically challenged is quite easy in fact 